As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy, available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba da ba ba ba. Look at you stepping out of your hotel and following your nose around the corner to pick up some. Bom dia. Queria pedir um pastel de nata. Portuguese. When you're exploring a new side of yourself, that's when you're with Amex. American Express. Don't live life without it. Welcome, everyone, to the From the Shadows podcast. I'm your host, Shane Grove. And uh, before I bring on uh, today's guest, I just want to remind everybody that if you have a sighting or uh, an experience you want to share with us, you can find us at From the Shadows podcast on Facebook. Uh, You can find us on our forum page on Facebook called After the Shadows. You can get a hold of me at Shane Grove Author on Instagram. Or find us at our uh, From the Shadows podcast Instagram page. Or the good old-fashioned way, just go to the the fromtheshadowspodcast.com website, hit the contact button. You can send me an email. I promise I'll uh, read and get back uh, a hold of you. Um, We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear uh, about your experiences or, you know, just anything in general. So, and if you're looking for extra content and the, I think we also put our episodes up commercial free about a day early too. Go check out our Patreon page. There might be something there that uh, that interests you if you want some uh, some extra stuff. If you can't get enough of us, which I I don't know who could not get enough of us. I think everybody has enough of us, if you ask me. But uh, that's beside the point. So uh, I think a lot of our loyal listeners know that. Uh, we're based here in Ohio, and so we really love, not that we don't love all um, cryptid stories and Bigfoot stories and UFOs from all over the world, but we really love them from Ohio. So that w- that's what makes uh, today's guest even more exciting for me to have on and, and have her share, uh, share her story. So I want to bring on to the show Debbie. Debbie, welcome to the From the Shadows podcast. Hello. Now you didn't sound very excited. That no. was kind of. A, <laughs> I'm very excited uh, to be on. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. There <laughs> we go. I thought we talked about that before. No. Uh, <laughs> so, so Debbie, I, I'm, I'm super excited for you to share your story with everybody because I think um, a lot of times we have guests on and 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 uh, some of their stories are from places that aren't super familiar with everybody but i think uh i think a lot of people are going to uh have, they're going to recognize where you're talking about and probably have been there themselves especially our ohio listeners so why don't uh, why don't you let's just get into it share okay. <laughs> what happened what happened your birthday weekend yes so um me and my uh son's girlfriends were at a winery and they were joking around and they're like, cause my birthday's Halloween. So I love always wanted to go to Hocking Hills, uh, and get a cabin. Um, heard wonderful things about it and just one of the things I've always wanted to do. So they're like, let's get a cabin. So there was about, there was 10 of us, um, three of my kids, their girlfriends, their boyfriend, my daughter's best friend and my son's best friend and his girl. So it was like, there was 10 of us that went to the cabin. Um, so we went, uh, it was what, 2020, I think it was. So we went on a Thursday and Saturday was Halloween. So, um, we were staying Thursday through Sunday. So we get there on Thursday. You got, you know, it was really, it was really cool. Um, it was on a real creepy road. It goes, it's like a road was your driveway, but it was like a road and it goes all through the woods and goes up 
like um like you're going up the mountain kind of so where we the cabin was way up on top so just sitting in the woods and then um so it was really cool um so the first thursday when we got there was we didn't get to do a whole lot because it was raining but they still it didn't stop the the other ones from going outside getting in the hot tub and because the hot tub was outside and I stayed in, decorated the cabin, like Halloween, stuff like that. Nothing out of the ordinary. So um, Friday comes, we all get up. Everybody's cooking their own breakfast. You know, everybody had just tons of bacon and eggs and all kinds of stuff. We're just having, you know, and, you know, people going in outside and had our radio blasting and uh, just having a good time. And then um, I remember after all that, I went outside to get in the hot tub for the first time. And there, there was just this horrible smell. And I remember all of us trying to figure out where this smell was coming from. It was coming and going. And I thought maybe, I don't know if you noticed, like, well water sometimes can smell. So I didn't know if it was, like, their water or something. Um, and then I thought because it rained, maybe it was the mud around the, the hot tub. So I was trying to figure it out. And my kids would run around. they try to figure it out. So, you know, we just let it go. And it was just like on and off Friday, the smell. Um, just goofing off. People were doing pranks on each other a little bit, you know, trying to, you know, jump scare people and, um, you know, stuff like that. So uh, especially my son's friend, Matt, he, uh, he liked to try to jump in the window and scare you and stuff like that. Um, so Friday night come and... Um, we were all doing like our own thing, kind of. Uh, several of us were way down in the bottom level watching scary movies. And then, um, so the main bedroom that I was in had a jacuzzi tub, you know, and it was like a bigger room and it was creepy. But, um, but the smell never came in the cabin. That night while we were watching the movie, my son and his girlfriend came down and said that um, that smell was coming was in that room real quick. And we were like, What? You know, why would it be in, you know, that was just weird because it wasn't anywhere else. And we thought that was weird. And then they went to bed. So we were done with our movie. And I switched rooms with my daughter because I went upstairs with her friend because I was too creeped out in that room by myself. So I went upstairs. And my son's friend, Matt, and his girl were out on the top deck of the cabin. The lower level is where the jacu- uh, hot tub was. And like, there's like a game room and everything that goes out. If you go upstairs and it's the kitchen and living room, that goes out into a top deck. So they were sitting out there. I said goodnight to them. And I went upstairs. Not, but like five minutes. I remember just getting comfy thinking, and I was on my phone thinking, oh, this is comfortable. Because I didn't get much sleep the night before. And the door comes banging open. And there's Matt standing there all confused looking. And we were like, me and Tanijah, the my daughter's friend, was like, what's wrong? And he just looked really confused. And he said, who's messing with us? And we're like, what do you mean? And he wanted to know where everybody was at. And I said, well, everybody's in bed. And he's, then he really looked confused. He said, somebody's outside messing with us. And so me and Tanijah jumped up and we went downstairs. And as I got to the kitchen, his girlfriend's got her hands up against the glass, looking like she's looking for something out the windows. So I go up to where she's at and I look on the deck and I see that Matt had barricaded the two stairwells, stairways outside with chairs. And I remember looking at him, you know, he's a big guy, you know, tall, big guy. You know, he's like, I said, you something really uh, scared you guys for you to be, you know, blocking the stairs off. So he starts telling us a little bit about all the noise that was going on, like things maybe were being thrown at him, really big things are being thrown. Um, he said uh, he would even like jump around the corner. He thought we were all getting back at him for doing the pranks he did earlier. And he said they would try to talk or whatever, and then they get interrupted hearing loud noises. Cause on that side where the deck is in the hot tub, if you go a little bit on the grass, you go into the woods and it goes down a ravine. That whole side is a ravine and it goes all the way down. And then there's like a field a little bit behind the cabin. And um, 
the ravine is on the left and the way in the back is the, some more woods and then on the right is all woods and so we were on the ravine you know the, the decks on the ravine side and so so what so just i'll, I'll stop i will stop it quick there so people okay. listening so so the deck extends out and it's kind of it's all, overlooking the ravine but surrounded yeah. by woods on two sides yeah and, and and so for the people that are familiar with hawking hills it is a really cool tourist touristy type yes, destination it's, yes and, and it's a place where people hike and there's yep. a lot of waterfalls. there's can there's um there's yeah. caves there's waterfalls they're very known for their caves and waterfalls yeah so so it's so he they're out there and it's not beyond the realm of possibility that there's other people that may be in the woods hiking or no, or not something. here. Oh, not, not where we were. Not yeah. Not where we were. Uh, uh. we were like well, up on a, like a mountain, not a mountain, but you know, like we were up and okay. yeah, for anybody to come up the ravine was impossible. It was, okay. there was, cause I tried to walk down it some, me and my daughter tried to walk down it and we couldn't even barely go a little bit. There was no way between the trees and everything in the brush and everything and the steep it was, there was no way that we could, we could even go down it to a certain part. So I know the ravine, no. And then it just went on and on. And then all the rest of the woods went on and on. And there was really not anything until you got down to the main road which was still a, just a dark road by itself that led to, you know, somewhere there was, you might find something way down the road. Gotcha. Um, so, so the possible, yeah. okay. So there, so yes. Yeah, so the, the possibility of just some random people being lost or whatever, no, uh -uh. pretty slim. Okay. Oh yeah. Right. And that's, okay. that's why we were getting creeped out because, you know, that's what I was going to get to in a little bit. But yeah, you, you thinking that there was even people out there was more creepy than anything at like three in the morning. So we were like, there's no way, you know, if we have my son was like, if there's people out here running around, we're, we're leaving because it, you know, it was, it was even, that was really scary. So we were like, uh, no, yeah. that's some Texas so, chainsaw massacre. Right. Hills have eyes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like this isn't a Wrong. place like none of the caves or anything or even the neck, the, the closest cave to Logan, we were in Logan's County. Um, there's like three little, I think there's three little cities that represent Hocking Hills and we were in Logan and I think because when they went to the one cave, I'm pretty sure it was like 10, 15 minutes to get to the cave. So we still had, if you drove, you still had a ways to get to some of the caves. Like we weren't, we, where our cabin was, there was no, you can get cabins in Hocking Hills where you can go outside and take a five minute walk through the woods and maybe get to a cave. But those are like, you know, they, they got cabins everywhere in Hocking Hills. Where okay. our cabin was, we were probably about, I think it was like 15 minutes at least drive when they went to go to the main cabin or the cave. Um, okay. to go try to check it out. So you're so, essentially you're essentially in the middle of the, one of the wrong turn movies. You're right. Out there, out there. Okay. Right. So right. so now they're so they're super freaked out because there's really no chance of it. No, right. And they were so confused and they thought because the only humans they thought would be us. And they thought that my daughter and my other son, his best friend, was messing with them because he liked to prank them during the day, just doing stupid stuff. So that's what he thought at first. He even okay. jumped around the corner one time and because he heard something and there was nobody there. So what really started getting to him is, um, you know, there's something either shook or hit one of the trees or big bushes or trees or something down in the ravine and all the birds flew out of it and scared him and his girlfriend if really were like whoa and they heard it and then they heard all then all the birds took off so that was one incident and then they were getting a whatever whatever and then the big boom that happened near the hot tub either it was something huge that was thrown they don't know exactly what it was, but that's when he threw the chairs up against the things and took off in the cabin. And um, so, yeah, so, they, yeah, something definitely was going on. I could tell 
because he blocked the stairs off and his, I could see his, you know, his girlfriend sitting here looking through the windows with her hands up, like, you know, scared. And I was like, what in the world What's going on? So it was only, it was the four of us in the kitchen and everybody was still sleeping. They had no idea what was going on. So we start, I sat, it was like a picnic table as your table. It was really cool. So I was, we were sitting there by the windows because the cabin was all windows, pretty much almost all windows with no curtains. So, you know, we were li- trying to listen and whatever. And I was trying to see if I could hear what they were hearing. So I cracked the window open. Um, and then I, I think, I, I think we shut the window. We we're looking through the window towards the back of the cabin, which was the, the deck would have been onto the, would have been to the left. If you're standing in the kitchen, the deck would have been to the left through those windows. And then straight back is the back of the cabin. And his girlfriend was sitting close to the window. She was like up close to the window, looking through it. And I was sitting there and I said, let's turn all the lights off. I said, because we were getting a glare on the windows for one. And I said, let's just turn all the, turn the lights off. Every, just turn them off. So right when they got to the, you know, the light, that's kind of like over your stove. They turned that one. I remember Matt and Tanisha turned that one off. And within seconds after they turned that off, we had like a little cute couple seconds of silence. And then I hear Matt's girlfriend yell, there it is. And then I looked and I, we all saw this in that window. We saw this black thing come up out of the ravine into the grass area. And it looked like it was on all fours at first. So I ran to the kitchen window. It's a little square window above your sink. <clears throat> and it faced directly f- where this thing came out. And then the moon was a full moon, of course, and it lit up the back. So we, I saw, so when I got to the kitchen window, then Matt and Tanisha followed me to the kitchen window and and his girlfriend stayed over there. So she didn't get as good of a view as when we ran to the window. And I remember getting to the kitchen window and I'm staring at this thing. And as soon as I got my eyeballs on it, I was staring at it. It's then it just stood straight up. He just stood straight up. And he was huge. He was dark. He was huge. Shoulders, just everything. And then I was just in shock. And then I hear uh, Matt behind me, like, kind of moving around saying, you know, do you see or what is that or something like, do you see that or something? And then I heard Tanija, who's a skeptic. I hear her say, do you see the shoulders on that thing? And then I knew they were seeing what I was seeing. And then all of a sudden, it just, as normal as can be, just start walking towards the cabin on two legs. Just start walking right towards us. He was coming right for us. And that freaked me out. And I started yelling, he's coming for the cabin. And I went to turn. And as, because you can hear through the windows really good. Because when if you're outside, you can hear the TV. You can hear us partying, whatever. You can hear that all that. So he must have heard us because I yell, started yelling, he's coming for the cabin. I went to turn because I was going to go scream and get my kids. And then I heard them say, oh, he's, he's, he, he turned, what he did is he turned around and went back on all fours and went down where he came out of in the ravine. And I still ran and got everybody up. So everybody gets up. So we all go out on the, on the deck. We all run up on the top deck. and. Um, I'm like all cuddled up to my, my kids and stuff. And I'm just like, from what I just saw. And then, um, everybody then all 10 of us got to started hearing the howls and the screams. And, um, I remember one of the howls. I remember it perfectly. And I looked at my daughter and I said, that's exact how we hear on finding Bigfoot show. And she, and she was like, yeah, it is. And it was just really weird. So then we're hearing all this noise and then you're hearing like tree, big tree branches cracking and the smell. We still got whiffs of that and it was crazy. And then the deck, you can go around to kind of the front of the cabin. It goes down a ramp and you can end up in front of the cabin. And we slowly start making our way that way because now we start hearing stuff going on in to the left of the front of the cabin. So if you stand in front of the cabin on the right side, it depends on how you're looking. If you're standing at the cabin, looking at the driveway, the ravines on the right, on the left, 
there's like a little grass area. They put up this little island and then it go, then it's just all woods, just all woods. So we started hearing all this noise over there to the left of the cabin. And then you could see because of the moon, you could see movement of like a big shadow thing run from like the, the little bed thing I told you they made into the woods. And so we saw movement. My one son, we all, you know, they all got to witness that. So we knew something was moving over there. Then we'd turn around and we'd still hear it in the ravine behind us. And it, so then we then knew there was more than one because they were in two set couple different places at once. So that went on for a little while and then it kind of got quiet. So we went back in the cabin. I think by this time it was like four or five in the morning. And a couple of them decided to go lay down, but some of us stayed up. I couldn't go to sleep. And my one son, who's 6'2", he was waiting for the sun to come up or the light because he was going to go right where they where he came out. And he was going to look for feet print, see if there's, you know, he's like, if there's, if I see a bunch of human feet print or anything, he goes, we're out of here. And so that's it. You know, the light came. We went through every scenario of sitting there. While we were waiting, we went through every scenario possible. We were talking about someone, if it was a human, if it was a human, he would, in a costume, he would have had to have been on stilts. And there's no way someone on stilts is going to come out of that ravine. There's, there's no way it's humanly possible that someone on stilts can come through that ravine. And so we went through all kinds of stuff. And I just kept saying, I, it's, it has to be a Bigfoot. What else is it? Or it's like a demon or something. Something came out of those woods. And um, so he went out there when the light came up. And they found like the area of where he came out. And because of the way the trees and the brush was all mangled together, there was an opening. And he would have had to crawl out that hole coming out of that ravine. And that's why he went on all fours to go back through it. And once you get down to a certain point, then he could stand. So... We saw where he came out, but then all the tall grass or whatever it was at the time was all smushed down everywhere. So you couldn't, it was all smushed, but you couldn't see an actual footprint. So I looked from the kitchen window and I looked at my son. I made him stand there and I wanted to see the size difference. And he made my 6'2 son look small. Like, the, and I had Tanija come in and look too through the window. And the, no, it, he didn't even compare the slightest. And so that was, so then my son and my daughter were out there goofing off and make, they were like repeating the sounds we had heard, like making fun of them kind of. And when they were doing that, they shut up for a second and they were doing something. And then all of a sudden you heard it down a ravine, it repeated back at them. And they were like, looked at each other and they're like, did you just hear that? And, um, so they came back in and, once my other son got up, he took a walk to the front of the cabin to the left where the island is. He just walked, said, I'm going to take a walk over there. He was smoking a cigarette and he just want to take a walk because that's was there was a lot of movement going on over there, too. So he happened to walk and then he come back in and put his phone down in front of me. And there was a picture and he took a picture of this humongous footprint that was right next to the island. And I was just like, that just that was it. That's I. You, you can't deny it now. You can't deny whatsoever what we saw. And um, so that, you know, that all happened. And then as Saturday, as, as right after that morning ended and the day started and everything, all day Saturday, it was quiet. It was peaceful. No sounds. No smell. The smell was gone. We waited and waited and waited for that smell. And we, we were like in the hot tub and everything. We're like, where's the smell? Where is the smell? It doesn't just go away. And never smelled it in that room ever, nowhere in the cabin, never smelled it outside. And me and my daughter deliberately, some of us stayed up till like four in the morning that night, Halloween night, and uh, just peaceful, just so quiet and peaceful. Not, you could, you could hear, it just was so quiet. So we knew whatever it was, was gone. And then Sunday we all got up and before we left, no smell, no nothing, no nothing. So that, yeah, so we weren't, so, you know, 
afterwards and you start, you know, everything's hitting me and that, you know, and you know, that's why I went and started sending messages. And then Matt Moneymaker called me and from finding Bigfoot show. And he called me and said he had been there a week and a half. Uh, when he's talking to me, he goes, I was just there a week and a half ago for a sighting only a mile away from the cabin you stayed in. And I was like, wow. And then that just confirmed. And he told me it's exactly what I saw, and, you know, everything that we experienced. And yeah, so it's crazy. I, you know, to this day, I still can't believe it. We're like, well, well that was a great Halloween birthday. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, you're not, you're never going to top that birthday. You no. Just- also just give up give up right right? well yeah but now like you know ever since i was you know i had to learn and talk i got a lot of people i talked to from shows and stuff and i was actually on a show uh they called me uh to be on uh, these woods are haunted so i went to drove to michigan and the three of us that actually saw him um were the ones that were on the show and um so, yeah, we were on These Woods Are Haunted, I think, season three, episode seven is our story. It, it had to be changed up a little bit because because of COVID, they couldn't get 10 actors. They only got five. So they couldn't fulfill the whole story the way it was because they had to, they didn't have 10 actors, different actors to make it. So they did have to change it up a little bit. But oh, I'll have to I'll have to go check that out. That, I, I'd love to see how they. Uh... Depict- yeah, like they made big, they made Bigfoot like literally right next to the door practically, and he just come out of a tree. Like it, they made it, it was quite different in certain spots. Um, but the, you know, just us being there and that kind of stuff, you know, they, they're just telling the main story of us being there and witnessing it there. And I went back twice, and we've had a we had a little bit of stuff, uh, but I haven't been able to actually like. The one place I got the year after was like a little cottage and it was like all these neighbors around. I'm like, that's not what I wanted. Capella University is rethinking higher education. With our FlexPath learning format, you're in control. Set your own deadlines and move as fast or slow as you'd like. Explore a different way forward at capella.edu. What's new with you? Let's see. Oh, you're getting a taste for something different. I tried a muffaletta. Turns out, I like olives. Relaxing. Far, far away from the city. Oh, I needed this. You needed this. Oh, and getting together with some old friends to find your new favorite band. (laughs) That show was amazing. When you are the most you, that's when you're with Amex. American Express. Don't live life without it. As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy. Available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. ba da ba ba So now you're kind of like, um, and, and I could tell like the first time we talked and I mean, I was kind of amazed as you told the story and from the, uh, activity happening in the sort of the back of the house or to the right of the house. Uh, and then you guys heard noises in the front Yeah. and I, and I said, Oh, so you guys, so you guys are on the deck and you're like, no, we were down in the driveway. <laughs> yeah, because it. Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, you're literally well, at ground these level. These cabins, yeah, these cabins are awesome. You can have decks that wrap all the way around. You got different levels, or you got these cabins are really cool. And um, so you can get all different kinds. And the, our deck happened to come around, but as you got come around, I think it kind of went down a ramp so you can go downward, down. Um, you could get up to the deck that way. Or you can get, you know, it was like, there was like three ways you can get up on that deck. If you wanted to go through by the front, it had like a ramp. And then if you went around by the hot tub, there was little stairs. Or you can get through the kitchen gliding or glass door. 
Well, my my point wasn't so much as how cool the cabin was, but was how crazy you guys were, because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. you go from uh, the one guy putting chairs you know, in front of the stairs because he's so scared to now you guys are standing out in the driveway and kind of I know. And we were all cuddled up like together, all 10 of us. It was so funny. If you think back now, <laughs> I see us all like, and then you got like her best, my girl, the Tanaja, the one that saw, saw him with us. She was kind of like, and she's the one that kept turning around saying, guys, guys, there's still one over here. And she kept having the fear that we were going to, one was going to come up from behind because we were all focusing now towards the left side of the front of the cabin. And she's like, guys, do you not hear that? You know, she was getting all creeped out, but we were all like huddled together. Oh yeah. I was scared to death. Actually. I really was, but, um, well, 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 let me, so let me ask you. So, so the first time you saw the, the, the creature on coming up on all fours and standing up and then, now, was there something out there? Because you said your son went out there and tried to, so you could give a size comparison. Was there something out there that you kind of compared it to when you saw it the first time? Yeah, or, you could, just, or you you just could, could see how small he looked. He was standing exactly where he came out into the grass right there. Okay. And um, the, the size difference from where my son's head is compared to what I saw or we saw way taller. And those shoulders, like, like half his, just the one side shoulder probably was like my son. Like, you know what I mean? It was like, it was that visible where you could see the big side. There was no comparison. There's no comparison that you can even come close to when you're looking at this thing. And we all three said the same thing. We, we, you just, the size of it. It was because it, it was right in the moon, right? It, it came out right at the perfect spot. It came out right where the moon was shining on. You know how the moon lights up your yard? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. It lit up all the way up to a certain point before the woods. And he just come out right, right in that corner, right out in the open, right in the, where the moon was. And it was just like, uh, just, I was just shocked. I couldn't believe that thing came out of the woods, period. Because I didn't know what we were looking for. I didn't know what was out there scaring them. But I didn't expect that to come crawling out of the the woods like that. And and so when you guys went over there and, and he looked, so basically at the top of the ravine was brush. Yeah, it was, it was like, you know, you know how you give your, all your mangled like brush yeah. and, and tree, yeah. little trees and big, then you got your mammoth trees and it's all like intertwined together and it's hard to get through like maneuver like that that's kind of all mixed in uh and especially right there on the end so once he got through that then once he went down a little he could stand and run down the ravine or whatever he does but um i we tried to go me and my daughter tried to go down not necessarily where he came in but to the left a little bit. We tried to go down to see where we, how far we can start going in. And we didn't make it very far at all. There was no way that we could go down. And so basically when you saw him on all fours coming up, he was crawling up through the room. Yeah. That's what he was doing. Okay. Yep. Now. Um, so let me, ask, let me ask you, do you think then the one that you saw on the, on the other side of the house that it came up from the ravine too, or did I don't it come? Know. I have no idea. I think they, I don't know. I don't know if they were just in different spots because remember I told you the smell that my son smelled in that bedroom yeah. for a little bit, uh, was on the side of the house opposite of the ravine. It's on the side of the house where that wow. was found. So they could have been while well, we were all, you know, whatever. I don't know who that one could have been over there. And if and if Matt and and his girl were on the deck, they would not know that he was over there. Because now, uh, now you so so Matt and his girl were out there, and uh, they were upstairs first. I think they had a little argument or something. I'm not sure, <laughs> but then they ended up on the deck. I'm not quite sure when they went out, but they were out there when I went upstairs to go to bed. So, um, but, th- they were out there a little wait while before I went upstairs because he literally came barging through my door. 
five minutes after I got in the bed. But but so he said that there was he he had heard some noises and some stuff may had have, have gotten thrown at them. Does he think it was like as you sit back and and think about what all happened? Was it the one maybe that was out front of the house that was it doing could have, that? It could have been coming from both because when he starts thinking back, because when he heard noises and remember I told you he jumped around the corner to, to, to try to catch somebody. And that when he jumped around the one corner, it was the one that goes down the ramp to the front. So, and no one was there. So there could have been something on that side where it was messing around. And then you have the one definitely in the ravine because that's where things were coming out of that were in front of the deck and on the side of the decks. And that's where the tree was, or big tree or whatever, in oh, the okay. ravine is the one that got shook or something really bad, and all the birds flew. So well, it, it makes you it makes you wonder then if they were trying to drive those guys inside, so that then right, they could cut, that's so true. They, so that they could come in then and kind of right, like, uh, like look in the windows and check you guys. Yeah, out. which is freaky enough. Because when I uh-huh. talked to Matt Moneymaker, I told him I said, as soon as that light went off. I'm talking like seconds after that last light went off. He came right out like no big deal. And he said, yeah, that they were waiting for the, he goes, once the lights went off that he felt okay to, you know, now I can come out. And I said, well, he was walking and I told him how I was walking towards the cabin. That's just what, that's the biggest thing I remember seeing him walking like a human right for me. And he's like, yeah, he goes, he was coming to the cabin. He goes, they're curious. And they were probably coming to look in the, windows and i'm like well, yeah that's creepy <laughs> i said so so it, it mattered, and her wouldn't have been outside so we would have had these things looking in our windows and didn't even know it and uh he's like yeah probably he goes the set the music the the loudness of us and the food we were cooking all that throughout the day he said brought them in probably and they were curious and they definitely were there because the smell was there all off and on all day friday well so I want to. So I also want to say. So so then you guys go back out onto the deck after the thing disappears into mm-hmm. the ravine, and so now you're hearing all these noises. So was it like now they all weren't happening at once? I, I'm no, it would, you'd be like staying in there and you would hear like movement, and then then some of the ho- uh, noises were kind of close. Like the one sound like a woman screaming. It was the weirdest sound. And then another one was like this howl, which I think that was the one they call the Ohio howl. Cause that's, I recognize that from the show immediately. Me and my daughter looked at each other and um, just, and then there was this weird, um, I don't know if they were some kind of talking. It was like eight men. Like we would hear this weird. Uh, so we heard different kinds of sounds and we were just like, what? And then, um, like I said, and then you would hear like, uh, like loud noises as far as like trees. Uh, you could tell it was something big because, of, you know, it wasn't no little stick. <laughs> so so you think now, and you said it sounded like eight men. So did you think they were, commu- some some of them were communicating? They had to like- be. I think so. Because when I heard that scream, I'm like, okay, well, that must be a female. And I, we were like just was saying whatever because I didn't know. But I'm like, OK, what is that? And, you know, and then we would just hear these. And that's why I said when my son and my daughter were down by the ravine in the morning, like when the sun came up, or whatever, they were making fun of one of them because it sounded so weird. And they were doing it back and forth, like making fun of it. And then it got it came up from the ravine, the exact sound they were making fun of. So then they shut up and came in the cabin. I was like, I said, well, it wasn't that long ago we saw him in coming out of the ravine. So it wouldn't be out of the thing that he's still down in the ravine. So, you know, but I know after that, it all settled down and not a peep, not a nothing, not a smell. And we were all out on that deck. We smelled it. We kept smelling that smell. We were like, oh, there's that smell again. So they, they definitely, I don't know. But if you think about it, I mean, if they were... If they they if they wanted they could have came in and just tore us all up. Like now that I'm in, in that position, I'm like, you know, thank God. But you know what I mean? Like, but they were there. It, it doesn't it doesn't seem like from a lot of the story. Of course, if uh, they wanted if 
one of them came into a house and tore it all up, you probably would be telling the story. Exactly. So, so yeah. So most of the exactly so every story you hear is it's they're more curious and have no real desire to to really interact with you. I mean, that's what human. I mean. After seeing this thing and seeing the size of it and feeling the fear, because all I kept it was coming for the cabin. That's uh, that was my overwhelming thing. And I didn't know what it was going to do when it got there. And all I could think about was my kids and everybody in the cabin. And that's why I went to turn to go just start screaming through the cabin, get up. And he happened to turn and go back down. And you, I, I was so happy when I heard them say that as I was turning, oh, he went back down and went back in the ravine. And I was like, oh, thank God. Because, but I don't know. And and uh, I look back at it now and I'm thinking just that one alone could have tore us all up. <laughs> he was so big. Yeah, so, of course. Of course. Yeah. You know, let alone being multiple. But yeah, no, it, 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 they could have if they wanted. So so I'm, I'm curious. So when you guys all come off the ramp and are standing in the driveway and you know there's something going on. And how, how far away was that uh, island from where you guys were? It wasn't standing? that far. And then in the morning, we walked over to the island because I wanted to see the footprint myself. And he, so I saw it and it was almost like, and he had a perfect, perfect view of us. Like we, we must've looked goofy to this thing. He, he was him standing there or kneeling down or whatever he was doing. You could just see our little group right in front of them, just standing there in the front of the cabin in the driveway. Perfect. Just nothing was in his way of looking at us. And I'm and I'm like, this thing was just in here watching us. And I said, um, it, it really pretty close. Like we were on the gravel and all you do is walk a little bit and you'd hit the grass and then you go up a little little hill, little thing, and there was the there was the um island right there. And then you take a few steps from the island and you'll go into the woods. So it, it was that was pretty close. That's why I think we were able to see a little bit of the movement. I mean, we could hear it, too. Don't get me wrong. But um, I, so, that was a place. Yeah. So there's thousands of people right now listening that are going to be like, what? What are you guys crazy? Why didn't you guys <laughs> run back? in the house? I mean, why? I mean. I don't know. I I, I wanted think to bring it, everybody out. I wanted to bring everybody out to kind of. I was. I, I I just couldn't believe what I saw. I'm glad. I'm so glad the other two saw it with me. Um, it's just a hard thing to tell people, and they all at least got to witness the smell, the sounds. Uh, they got to see something moving. They got to see the footprint. So they 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 you know they did get to. See but I really would love to all of them to see what I saw. <laughs> so that's why when we go back, we always think about going back. It's not necessarily because when I think that there's one near, I panic. And they, they're like, what are you doing? Like, I'll like, be, like, I'll just be like panicking. And I'm like, I'm scared of it, but I just want you guys to see it. <laughs> so, now, have you, have, you, have you thought about going back to the same exact cabin? Yes. Yes. Well, okay. Okay. So, the following year, 2021, we went to a cottage, I told you, and it was like neighbors around, but over to the left was went into ravines and was, you know, really far, you know. So me and my daughter, my son would be outside just goofing off. And um, we would like we heard this whistle sound in the distance and then I'd whistle it whistle back way, way in there. And that was probably that. And then something got thrown and hit the garage behind us. And scared me to death. And I was running towards the I was running towards the house and my son went running towards where it got hit, where it got thrown. And my daughter's standing in the street and road. She's like, what are you guys doing? But that was the only thing that happened the time we were there. So then last year in August, they had the first Hocking Hills Bigfoot Festival in Logan. And I said, I am not missing that because that's exactly where I saw my sighting. So we, me and my daughter and her boyfriend went. And then after, during the night, we wanted to go somewhere. We didn't know where to go, though, because we had a hotel room. So we went back to the cabin, and the road, the driveway is like a road. It goes all the way up. There was people at the cabin, but we parked in, on the road, and we turned our lights off, and it's only a one way. And we just sat there in the pitch black with the ravine on one side and the woods on the other. And believe it or not, uh, we, the second night we did that, we started smelling that smell. 
and I was getting freaked out and something was banging down the road from us, like literally in front of our car, but down further, something banged about eight times in front of us. There's nothing there, like absolutely nothing but woods. There's no nothing. And just some couple freaky things that happened. So to me, I still feel they're probably in that area. Um, but yes, we do want to get that cabin again one day, hopefully. It just it's just because it sleeps like 14 people. So the four of us can't go because then we'd have to pay the full price. It was cheaper when you have more people. So that's the only reason, one reason I haven't went back to that exact one. Debbie, I'm sorry, but no price is too much to pay to have an experience like that. Are you serious? Now, uh, the first thing I thought was, is how creepy would it be for you guys have gone up to that cabin, knocked on the door, and then kind of introduced yourselves as the people who had a, had a no, experience. No, I don't even think the lady who rented it to me has any clue. I've never, I never tell really people the name of the cabin. They, I just tell them it was in Logan and um, cause people ask me. And um, so I really, cause I, cause it was her cabin and I don't I never told her. Um, I don't know. She doesn't, must not realize that night oh, we're on a show. Uh, but I, I didn't, I don't think I gave him the name of the cabin um, for that either. I'm not sure, but. Now Matt Moneymaker knows because he was the one that Googled it on Google Earth and we were talking on the phone and looking at it together. And I was telling him exactly where he came out and where the this is and where that is. And um and then I got a couple other Bigfoot people, like the the one guy said I'm in his book. Him and this uh other lady want to actually go investigate that area. And I said, Well, if you ever do, uh let me know. <laughs> But I'm assuming we would have to contact the lady because it's her property. I don't know how that works, but yeah. So if I ever do go back, I don't know if I want to say anything to her or not. I don't know. Like, you know, what do you say? Oh, um, <laughs> by the way, but you would think that other people, but think about it. Unless people go there, I know now, unless you go there looking and you listen, you have no idea what, that anything's going on. Uh, you know how many people get stared at through the, their windows and have no clue? No yeah. clue. Or smell that smell that you were describing. Yeah, yeah. Dead in the yep. woods. You know? And if you're not if you're not actually sitting outside to hear all these noises, say in the winter, because it was October, it was like 20 degrees out. If you're not deliberately out there, because I know a lot of people that are close to me that go there and, you know, they just go there and they have the fire, their fireplace and, you know, we're made to get away. And I'm like, yeah, well. You don't know what's lurking out there, <laughs> you know, uh, because you don't really go out there now. You know, people do in the summer and stuff. But but when you go to the uh, Hocking Hills Festival and stuff, then you start coming across the stories. And that's what I that's what I enjoy. Because uh, now, did you did you run did you run into anybody at the at the festival that had a story from your area? I don't know. I think I, there was definitely Hocking Hills stories. Um, I can't remember if they were in Logan. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't remember exactly. There was this one guy who was older guy. He had said he had like witnessed him like, like seven times or something by now, but I don't know exactly where he was. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I'm, you know, a lot of people probably don't say anything, <coughs> you well, know, they don't since, say anything. Well, well, since Christy never listens to the podcast, maybe I'll schedule a trip to Hocking Hills you could tell me what the cabin is and we'll get it. And she won't have any idea that there's any possibility of a Bigfoot out there. And then maybe I can, maybe I can come up with some evidence or something out and she'll be, she'll wonder why I stay, I'm staying up till four in the morning because I, because <laughs> I'm always in bed, in bed long before that. Right. Seriously. But if, but I, now, told her, but if I told what? her, she'd be like, no chance. Right. Right. But I'm telling you now that when you start like understanding everything and what you that you've seen or you understand stuff and you investigate, I know I'll know when one's out there now. I know exactly what to listen for. I know exactly. I know from a tree knock to all these different sounds and and, and you could just tell uh, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be able to like if I was sitting there having a because I want to go in the summer. I would love to sit outside and have fires and stuff. I would love to do that, too. Uh, but if we were all out there having a fire, I would know. I'd be like, guys, there's one in the area. <laughs> They'd be like, what? I just, I just know I'd know. 
Now, before, well, I, w- I didn't know anything. Debbie, it's awfully big talk. I just got to be honest with you. It's <laughs> awfully big talk. <laughs> well, I, well I, I'm going to tell you what. I'm, I'm glad that um, that we got connected. And I'm glad, you know, I love the story. Uh, I lo- it's c- a crazy good story, especially from here in Ohio. And I'd love to hear yeah. more stories. I'd love to hear more stories from Hocking Hills, and I yeah, definitely love to hear hear some me more too. stuff. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear. Well, some yeah, more if I experience stuff. anything else, you'll be the first to know. But yeah, um, yes, I love hearing stuff too, especially in that area. Um, I'm learning other places in Ohio that are hot spots that I didn't even know about, and um, yeah, because you never know. You just don't know what you're well, going to see. Well, if anybody out there listening. It has it has a Hocking Hill story they want to share? Um, yeah, please. Even if, even if you just want to share it with Debbie, get a hold yeah. of me and uh, and I'll connect you guys because uh, I, I'd love to, I'd love to hear some more. So yeah, me but, too, me too. But Debbie, I appreciate uh, appreciate you coming on and sharing your story, nope. and I'm glad love- that you that you guys made it through that night. And uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> and, uh, right. And, and I will say that's probably the best uh, birthday present I've heard of anybody getting. Yes, that was some, um, you know, we're over here trying to be spooky and boy, we got spooky. All right. Uh huh. <laughs> yep. Well, well I, I don't even want to know what you wished for though when you blew out the candles. So. <laughs> I definitely didn't wish for a Bigfoot visit, but okay. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Debbie, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing something else. All right. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. <laughs>As if the McCrispy couldn't get any better, Bacon and Ranch just entered the chat. The Bacon Ranch McCrispy, available at participating McDonald's for a limited time. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Look at you, really going places. Used your Amex to book a much-needed vacation. Now you're stepping out of your hotel and following your senses. The sights, sounds, definitely that smell. It's sweet. You got to find out where it's coming from. Looks like you're headed around the corner to pick up some... Bon dia. Queria pedir um pastel de nata. Is that Portuguese? You're getting pretty good. When you're exploring a new side of yourself, that's when you're with Amex. American Express. Don't live life without it.